Well, hello and welcome to another Classics World video. Now, regular viewers will remember that we bought an Aston Martin DB7 V12 Vantage Coupe, the cheapest in the country at the time, and there were many who thought we were probably a little bit foolish buying such a prestige car at such a low price. Well, it turns out you were right, and uh, we quickly discovered that it was probably a bit too much of a project than we were willing to take on. So we thought we'd sell that on and double down with our next acquisition, this, a six cylinder version of the Aston Martin DB7. Our friends at Lancaster Insurance are running monthly giveaways. You can win all sorts, from experience days to tools, restaurant vouchers and tech. So click the link below at the end of the video to enter their latest competition. So let's take a closer look then at our recent purchase. Uh, this came in at a part exchange into a, a local Jaguar specialist uh, who was looking to move it on. It's got 93,000 miles on the clock, which actually isn't that bad for a car of this vintage. What strikes me about it is just how incredibly straight it is. There's really not huge amounts wrong with it. The bodywork is in remarkably good fettle. These original alloys are in good condition. These uh, enclosed headlights are a little bit misted up, but nothing too much to worry about here. The glorious DB7 lines are untouched with this car, and I think we've got a really good straight example, which couldn't have been said for our V12 example. It definitely looked a bit uh, tired. The interior is in remarkably good condition as well. All the leather's in good nick. The dashboard trim is all good, and it all works as well. On first acquaintance, at least, it looks like we've bought a good one, but let's get out on the road and uh, see what it's like to drive. <laughs> Gosh, it's nice to be in the dry. It's still pretty wet out there. And it's good to get behind the wheel of this 1997 six cylinder example of the Aston Martin DB7. It originally came with the six cylinder engine. It's a 3.2 version of Jaguar's AJ16 engine with a Eaton supercharger bolted onto it. I think it's a really lovely engine. It hasn't got the bravado and it hasn't got the power and the performance of the V12, but I think the performance is is sufficient for a car like this, particularly on UK roads. You know, we've said before, the DB7 has just got this immaculate styling. A young Ian Callum, while working for TWR, took on the penmanship of the DB7. The results speak for themselves. If he designed a submarine, it would be excellent because the, that's how wet it is today. So I think that V12 that we bought really was a lesson in uh, you do get what you pay for, unfortunately. And we could have spent a long time going through it and spending a lot of money rectifying the wrongs but the truth is we'd have probably spent more money than we would have spent if we just bought a good v12 in the first place so we quickly moved that one on and then this six cylinder example came up for sale at a local specialist on first acquaintance it's looking like a lot better purchase for a start all this interior trim is in a lot better condition it feels a lot nicer to drive it's very smooth it feels very well put together it's very refined it's no ball of fire this 3.2 but i like it it's got an elegance it's relaxing to drive. We felt we had to have an Aston Martin on the fleet having launched Aston Martin Driver magazine. I think as an entry level car, this DB7 six cylinder is about as good as it gets. There'll be many that scoff at the forward switch gear and the sort of cramped packaging and things, but a lot of that doesn't really matter when you're sort of sold on a car that has an Aston Martin badge on the front and looks as good as it does. I've not had much time in this Aston Martin DB7. I know when we picked it up, it was running a little bit rough and it definitely benefited from having a longer run. So who better to ask about the DB7 than the person who spent the most time behind the wheel with it, and that's the editor of Aston Martin Driver magazine, Paul Walton. So, Paul, what do you think? Uh, it has been an up and down experience. We've had a couple of breakdowns. The alternator went, and then the crank sensor popped off as well, stranded me on the A1. But I do love the car. It has a fantastic character. It looks fantastic. So you were the editor of Jaguar World beforehand as well. So how do you think this compares with the XJS on which it's based? It feels very similar, but not as well put together. It does feel like this is using second-hand parts, whereas the XJS is a complete car. I think this is a prettier than the XJS. Agree Other people might disagree with that. That's absolutely fine. I think this is prettier than the XJS, but I don't think it's as well sorted as it. You, you drive a late four litre from like the mid nineties and the XS is terrific. I don't think this feels like that. The trouble is it is just quite slow. You put your foot down and not a great deal happens for quite a long length of time. Yep. And when it does, it's quite noisy. It just feels like it's a car. This is a 97 example. It actually feels like it's an 82 car, for example. Certainly if you would drive a Jaguar from the same age, that would feel a lot newer. 
So the question is, if it were your own money, would you be taking this home? If it was half the price, yes. But I can't get over the fact that this is a 20, 25,000 pound car. A Jaguar of a similar standard is going to be half that. You can't get away from that. I, I do love it. I do absolutely love it. Great. And what are my thoughts after those initial impressions? This is definitely a better car than the V12 DB7 that we had, but I'm still not sold on the overall concept. The thing is with this DB7, I can't get my head around some of the compromises that undoubtedly the company had to take when they were designing and developing the car. It's a very pretty car for sure, and it's beautifully refined, but I can't help but feeling there are better alternatives out there. This video is proudly sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. Give them a call on 01480 400 889 for an insurance quote on your classic car. And don't forget to click the link below to enter their latest competition.